for the national anthem. Mr. Carmen and the band. Please be seated. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 138th commencement ceremony for the 2005 graduating class. I would like to extend a warm welcome to those who have traveled a great distance to share in the celebration of a significant rite of passage. Today's experience is not only important for the graduates, but also for the relatives and friends who have helped us get where we are today. On behalf of the class of 2005, I would like to first welcome the CHS Symphonic Band. Thank you for taking time out of your weekend to play for us on this special day. Next, to our teachers, our most sincere welcome and heartfelt appreciation. Throughout the years, you have done much more than simply provide us with a solid education. Each year, you push us to our academic limits, and your unflagging confidence in us encourages us to aspire to heights we never thought we could reach. Looking in the crowd today, I see many faces that I've observed each day as I pass through the hallways of CHS. Friends, whether met in school or out, you play a crucial role in the lives of these students before you. You teach us loyalty, selflessness, and a special kind of love that is unlike any other. Therefore, to our friends, welcome. <coughs> Aunts, uncles, and cousins, welcome. Together, you weave a net of love and support that is truly essential. While walking the tightrope of life, who knows where a slip might lead us should we fail to find you there to catch us. To all siblings, welcome. Thank you for the laughter and the confidences and all the I won't tell mom if you won't. Thank you for giving advice even when we thought we didn't need it and also for being a shoulder to cry on when we realized that we should have listened to you all along. And most of all, thank you for the knowledge that you will always be there behind, right behind us should we ever have need to call upon you. Grandparents, welcome. You, you play many unique roles in our lives, and every moment we spend in your presence helps us to better understand the world around us. For those of us fortunate enough to have had the opportunity to truly learn from you, your advice, your stories, your insight, and the memories, that, the memories of the times you spent together will not soon be forgotten. Parents, you have played the most significant role in your child's life since the day they were born. And although we may not often realize it, you deserve the most credit for getting us to this point in our lives. Without your guidance, who knows where the pull of life might have led us. Welcome to this special event, and thank you for all the gifts that you have given us. Someone once said that a person is simply the culmination of all life's experiences. If this is true, then all of you have played an essential role in molding and forming these students you see before you into the young adults that will shape the future. Fellow sculptors, please join me in welcoming the graduating class of 2005. children are forte rose requests. I want money, I want clothes, and the inevitable, I want you to just go away. 
These requests were usually refuted by the quintessential parental response, no. But on graduation day, the day we officially shed the label of childhood and adopt the attitude of a mature adult, Gretchen and I thought it would be appropriate to end the perpetual wanting and begin to thank you. Thank you for all the no's. Thank you for all the times you made us stay home and finish our homework even when all we wanted to do was go out with our friends. Thank you for being the lone fan at all our sporting events when it was pouring down rain and everyone else decided to come get the next one. Thank you for being the shoulder that was there for us to cry on when it seemed like everyone else had disappeared. All of these small displays of your love and devotion, though they may sometimes feel as though they go unnoticed, are not forgotten. For the past 18 years, you have been the enforcers, the ones who were looking out for us. You were the ones who made the rules, who guided us, and taught us right from wrong. Everything you have taught us, we want you to know today. For all the times you stared at us and simply received a look that said, I don't care, today is the day where we take those lessons and put them into action. In this respect, this is the greatest gift you can give us, because in passing on these lessons, there will always be a piece of you within us and with our children in the future. Maybe the most important thing that a parent can receive from their child is not a simple thank you, but a lesson that they have taught them being put into action. Mom, thank you for always making my life fun, for being the only mom that took a kindergartner to Mardi Gras, for being the only mom that tap danced next to me in my third grade recital, and for always reminding me that no matter what, every day is a gift, and depending on how you look at it, a party too. Dad, I think there are very few people in this world that know the value of honor and integrity. You have taught me the importance of principle above all else, and never to compromise my own beliefs for what may have seemed like the easier route. I stand here today because of your hard work and unabiding love for me. I am so proud to be your daughter. Thank you, thank you both for everything you have done to make me the person I am and the woman I'll become. Along with all the no's we received as children, we also heard several yeses from our parents. We were told, yes, you can try out for the team. Yes, you can go out with your friends, and even the reassuring yeses, telling us that our hard work will pay off. And then there were the yeses we wish you'd never said yes to, like the hideous dress we just had to have for the seventh grade dance, or childhood birthday parties with ridiculous themes. There comes a time in our lives when the yeses and noes finally make sense, and we can grasp the reasoning behind them. This understanding enables us to see how your decisions solely reflected our best interests. Parents, today we would like to tell you how much we truly respect and appreciate all of your efforts to make the right decisions for us. Understanding and respecting where we come from offers us a more confident approach to where we are going in life. Children are living examples of the teaching of their parents. Parents have shown us strength in their own convictions and we are able to recognize the strength and apply it to our own individual beliefs and ways of life. The number of parents and grandparents present this afternoon attests not only to the importance of education, but to their interest in our lives. By teaching us to value education, we have been able to stay strong even when things seemed hopeless. Now, we are able to realize that our mo motivation to succeed must come from within ourselves and not merely from our parents' prompting. It is up to us to decide what is right and ultimately what we stand for. Parents, now it is time for you to take a break, to sit back and relax and watch us do what you've been preparing us for these past 18 years. And even though we'll be busy making you proud, don't get too far away because we might still need you for the things that you've always done, to give us a pat on the back, to lend an eager ear, or to give a much needed hug. As we proceed through life, as we grow and change, we will always look back to those people who gave us our secure foundation. Mom, you are and always have been an incredible woman to me. Your selflessness and compassion inspire me every day. Thanks for staying up with me until 3 a.m. just to talk. Thanks for waiting up with me while I finish last minute homework assignments. And thanks for making our home a safe refuge at the end of the day. Dad, thanks for showing me the, how important it is to live life for your passions. You pursue all the interests you have and never compromise what's in your heart. A simple ride in the car always develops into a history lesson of the surrounding buildings and architecture. <laughs> My simple comment that I enjoyed one of your jazz tunes always lights up your face and is followed by a detailed explanation of the song, the key changes, rhythms, the art of improvising a solo. I love your enthusiasm towards life. Thanks for showing me how, you, how to love life and pursue, pursue my own passions. 
Thank you both for being an example of what love truly is. With every family's imperfections comes compromise and sacrifice that makes families real and keeps them together. You mean the world to me. Thank you for that. On behalf of the class of 2005, Lindy and I would like to thank all of the parents who have supported and encouraged us throughout the years. Your efforts are greatly appreciated and have not gone unnoticed. Thank you. Um, just a couple of things before we continue. We do have about 10 seats up here right behind the students on the left if some of you would like to come up and be seated. Maybe the little baby there at least. You know, and at some point in time, you guys could like crack a smile here or something. And <laughs> probably sad you're not going to see me tomorrow. I bet you're glad I stopped, huh? <laughs> it is my honor to introduce to you this afternoon the number one student in the class of 2005. She's earned a grade point average of 4.10 during her four years here in high school. That 4.10 GPA includes 13 semesters of advanced placement studies. Valedictorian for the class of 2005 is Lindsay Forrester. Could you come forward? The following students have earned a grade point average exceeding 4.0 throughout their high school careers also. Also included are 11 semesters of advanced placement studies. Salutatorians for the class of 2005 are as follows. Gretchen Hazelbaker, Lindy Stevens, and Sarah Beer. Presidential scholars are those students who have completed a stipulated course of study. This national award was established to encourage students to achieve at their highest academic standards by recognizing and rewarding them for educational excellence. The criteria involves a minimum of a 3.5 GPA, a minimum score above 80th percentile on a national achievement test, and having earned at least four credits in English, science, math, social studies, and two of foreign language. This year, 14 students were thus distinguished for receipt of this national award. Would the following presidential scholars please rise and remain standing till I have introduced the group. Would you please hold your applause until we're finished. Jennifer A. Jonathan Burke, Megan Chapin, Catherine Hyde, Lindy Stevens, Sarah Batterson, Jessica Bracy, Lindsay Forrester, Matt Long, Amanda Sussex, Sarah Beer, Zachary Carmen, Gretchen Hazelbaker, and Sarah Sickles. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated.
It's a great honor to stand up here to give away the following award. It's the John Vance Award. John Vance was a 1975 graduate of Coldwater High School. We believe he represents the highest standards of character and achievement to which all students should aspire. He was not just an athlete, nor an honor student, nor a student leader. He was all of these. On May 25, 1982, John lost a long battle with cancer. In memory of John Vance, we, the faculty and staff of Coldwater High School, wish to honor Mr. Zachary David Carmen, who rep represents the highest standard that John exemplified. Zach, would you please come forward? In most people's minds, today is a day to celebrate the accomplishments and achievements of those of us graduating from high school. And although it is an impressive task and the praise is deserved, we cannot take all the credit ourselves. There are many people who have helped to get us to where we are today. Our parents, our families, our teachers, and our friends have all played crucial roles in getting us here today. Our teachers have played more roles throughout the years than just people who instruct our classes. Our teachers have also acted as advisors, confidants, mentors, tutors, and oftentimes our friends. Over the past 13 years, our teachers have not only taught, taught us about science or English, but instead have enriched our lives by teaching us all sorts of unique facts and bizarre details about the world, people, and sometimes even ourselves. They have taught us about what life will bring in the future and how we can prepare ourselves to be the best people that we can be in the future. They have made it their duty to make sure that we had learned something new each day by the time we left their class. They've also made it their duty to make sure that when we step out into the real world, that we will not be shocked, but instead that we will be prepared to take that next step. Whether that next step is into the workforce or into college, they have helped prepare us for a variety of careers. From teaching to engineering, from construction to architecture, from medicine to agriculture, and much, much more. Our teachers have not only worked during the hours for which they were being paid, instead they took time out of their day before and after school to allow us to make up tests, get help with difficult lessons, or improve our projects. They also took time out of, our, of their lives to help support us at sporting events, ask us how our weekend went, and just to get to know us as people. These extra responsibilities that our teachers have taken on are just as important as the subject matter that they taught. Because these extra actions have taught us to be helpful, courteous, respectful, confident in ourselves, and caring, among many other important virtues. Although some people may think that this is not true of all teachers, I believe that it is. Even if the class was not your favorite or you did not personally like the teacher, you still managed to learn something during the class, even if it was only how to take a nap without the teacher noticing. Without this experience of disliking a class or a teacher, we would not know what we want to aspire to in the future. We would not be fully prepared to go out into the world and deal with people that we do not necessarily like on a daily basis. Therefore, even if you think that a certain teacher taught you nothing or that going to a specific class was a waste of your time each day, that teacher or class has taught you how to adapt and handle situations that at the time were unpleasant. It is because of this, learning not only through the direct teaching, but also through experience that we have gotten here today. Looking back now, it is more evident than ever that we owe a great deal of thanks to our teachers. They have helped to mold us in ways that we never could have imagined. So thank you for setting high standards and expecting only the best from each of us. Thank you for supporting us in all aspects of our lives, not only in school. Thank you for not confining yourself to, cur to curriculums, solely focusing on your subjects. But most of all, thank you for helping to shape us into the people that we are today. Thank you.
It's so easy to say, see you tomorrow. It's not as easy to say goodbye. As I stand before you today, I realize how short a time we have left here and how much we will change before we see one another again. Look around and memorize the faces you have come to know and love over the years. Look around and remember how it felt to go out to lunch in celebration of the year's end, to joke in the hallways, to talk for hours into the night. Cherish these memories, for while you may create many more in the years to come, you can't go back and redo high school. Although the faces you see today will only change slightly over the years, the people behind the faces will change dramatically. Just think about how you were 10 years ago. In elementary school, we were awarded gold stars for cut and paste, for coloring inside the lines. We had story time and recess, and everyone knew the boys had cuties, and the girls had them too. We saw the world through a child's eyes. Everything was all right, and if it wasn't, we could ask mom and dad to fix it. All we needed was a flashlight to scare away the monster under the bed. And if we ever got hurt, a band-aid and kiss would make it all better. We were children then. Middle school was another story. Instead of having one teacher all day, we actually moved to different classes, praying we wouldn't get lost in the halls. There were essays to be written, labs to be done, and homework to turn in the next day. We began learning the skills we would need in the long run, how to cite a paper, how to type properly, and how to work as a team with one another. We would compare schedules to find out if we had the same classes as our friends did. And when we found that there was only one friend from elementary school in our math class, we met new people and formed new friendships, alliances we would either keep or discard in the coming years. Finally, there was high school, the final four years before the ultimate freedom. It was middle school all over again, but with harder classes and stricter schedules. High school was a time when students stayed up late working on that major project, only to forget on, to wake up on time to present it. It was a time when friendships were no longer limited to one group, but expanded to include other groups, other friends who were met in sports, in clubs, and in band or choir. During high school, the teachers all had one thing in common, getting us ready for college. It seemed as though every month we had another test or survey to help us determine what career we wanted to go into and where we should go for our degree. Now, all of that is over and done with, and we can look forward to life on our own, away from parents and siblings, to forge a path of our own. What decisions have we made that will forever impact our lives? I ask you this knowing there is no answer. This is why we must be careful when we do choose. When we come to a fork in the road, we must continue on, and not look back with regret of what could have been. This is why I ask you to remember the good times, so you may look back on your life and see a life well lived. We will make mistakes, and we must learn from these errors and keep living. The times you share with your friends today will only be memories tomorrow. If nothing else, remember the words of Robert Brault. Enjoy the little things, for one day you may look back and realize they were the big things. Thank you. Today, I'm representing the foreign exchange student from the class of 2005. Fabio De Bono from Italy, who left us before Christmas, Julie Jam from South Korea, Swan Chi Kno from Germany, and myself. Looking back, I can say we all had an awesome, unforgettable, and a great year. We'll never forget the great times we had here with you. Neither will we forget the bad, hilarious, and embarrassing moments. And there were quite a few, I can tell. Like I lost the first day of school with having a map. We all had our language difficulties to go out there and talk a foreign language we barely even know. Luckily, we improved during the year with the help of everybody. Thank you so much. Not where there are also language difficulties, there are also culture misunderstandings. No, we didn't take the train to get here. We flew by plane, and yes, people in Germany know how to swim. <laughs> how often were we scared to say the wrong words, and how often were we afraid to be rude to people, finding out that there were that teachers and classmates were just teasing us, especially family members. And I want to thank each one of them. Thank you for laughing at us and with us. Thanks for making us part of the family, doing chores, caring and worrying about us, and making sure we were involved in school activities. We truly became a family member, forever part of the, Mer the Merkles, the Pomerankas, and the Smiths. Thank you. But also outside the families, we had a lot of fun times laughing and hanging out. 
On the other hand, we found the best friends we'd ever imagined to have for such a short time. I'm talking about the students of CHS. You helped us by getting to know us, showing us around, and taking us to Walmart at 3 o'clock in the morning, explaining things which are so normal for you and so foreign for us. Thanks for making us part of you. Another help were teachers, coaches, and counselors. Of course, everybody had a little comment about the foreign or the fake foreign exchange student. But when we had a problem, they were there for us. Graduation is the time to say thank you and to say goodbye. And for us, it's going to be a very long goodbye, or maybe forever. Everybody has its own way to say goodbye, and I'm not going to be the one of doing this here and now. I'm going to say something that is really important to all of us. Kamsamida, grazie, danke, thank you. Good, just leave one room there. Come down here and present it. Okay. It's my pleasure this afternoon to introduce the veterans that will be presented diplomas. Michigan Public Act 181 provides special recognition for the service of military veterans of World War II and the Korean War. This act authorizes the Board of Michigan School Districts to award a high school diploma to eligible World War II and Korean War veterans. Coldwater Community Schools recognizes the important contribution and sacrifice this generation of men and women made in our nation's defense. Coldwater High School would like to honor these veterans and their families today. The first veteran we'd like to recognize is Bernard Case, United States and Navy. <laughs> Arthur Hepner, U.S. Navy. Accepting Pat Hefner. <laughs> Louis Griffin, United States Navy, accepting his wife Marilyn and son in law, Roy Drew. Charles Young, United States Navy. <laughs> Richard Steffi, United States Army, accepting his son David Steffi. Thank you very much.
Go ahead, Chuck. They're waiting on you. At this point, I would just like to take a few seconds. Um, at the end of this school year, our current superintendent, Mr. Paragor, will be retiring. I would like to just say thanks. Thanks on behalf of Coldwater High School. Thanks on behalf of Coldwater Community Schools. And most of all, I appreciate all the advice and friendship that we've had during the past four years. And I'm not far behind you. Thank you, Mr. Heaston and uh, all the members of Coldwater Community Schools. I really appreciate it, thank you. Will the members of the class of 2005 please rise? On behalf of the faculty and administration of Coldwater High School, I present the class of 2005 to the Board of Education, and in so doing, verify that each member has met the requirements for a diploma and is entitled to all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. By the authority of the State of Michigan vested in the Board of Education, and by them delegated to me, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm retiring, I can do what I want. <laughs> we'll try this one again. By the authority of the state of Michigan, vested in the Board of Education, and by them delegated to me as president, I hereby confer upon you the diploma of Coldwater High School. You may be seated. Will the graduates now proceed to the podium to receive your diplomas? Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce to you the graduating class of 2005. The event, Ruznicek. Jessica Christine Brayson. Lindsay Sarah Forrester. Sarah Marie Beard. Catherine. Catherine Rebecca High. Stevens. 
Hello, Lindy K. Stevens. Gretchen K. Hazelbaker. Amanda K. Sussex. <laughs> Kyle Daniel Sell. <laughs> Samuel Pierce Ogle. Kevin Nathaniel Luper. Zachary David Carmen. Mindy Lynn Carr. <laughs> Caleb Jarvis Knowles. <laughs> Spancha Catarina Knowles. Joshua James Swan. <laughs> William Samuel Poole Bird. <laughs> Caleb Michael Green. Jeremy Scott Davidson. Brandon Michael Lindsay. Christopher Robert Peters. Kevin Wilbur Garn. Jason Edward Thomas. Chad Ru 
Ruby Lawrence. Daniel Shane Clausen. Megan Elise Silner. Kelsey Joe Bowers. Josh Ryan Gonzalez. Eric Michael Holt. Nathan Edward Neiman. Benjamin Robert Linder. Hi. Ashley Elizabeth Walrath. Victoria Lynn Garrett. Latasha Ann Wilkinson. Kelsey May Price. Victoria Ann Kunkel. Trevor Lynn Tomlinson. Avery Dane Rose. Philip Andrew Rice. Raquel Margaret Rocker. Angel Caballero. Shay Thomas Gillette. And Selmo Ramirez Cruz. Esmeralda Ariola. <laughs> Reina Alberto. <laughs> Laura Estella Mercado. Mario Flores. <laughs> Erica Corona. <laughs> Danny Alberto. Eric Brandon Hartbarger. <laughs> Hope Lynn Uptegrove. <laughs> Jessica Nicole Arnold.
Joel William Harmon. Bradley James Trader. Eric David Agar. Stephanie Christine Demarest. Lacey Marie Ludwig. Heather Elizabeth Petrowski. Carly Jean Andrews. <laughs> Laura Jean Bovee. <laughs> Carla Leanne Rogers. Brandon Scott Saunders. Candace Sue Marie Thatcher. Johanna Elizabeth Vanderpile. Ryan Lee Gundrum. Dustin Ray Lewis. Amy Jo Stanton. Ali Ahmed Nasser. Jose Gutierrez. Omar Gutierrez. Shane Michael Goings. Stephen Ray Wood. Justin Bradley Rasmussen. Amanda Alicia Hudson. Kara Michelle Frank. Christine Nicole Wakeley. <laughs> Philip Maurice Albert. <laughs> Alec Douglas Bauer. Aaron Lee Granger. Jack Brian Ty. Michael John Castle. Serena Ann Seckler.
Stacy Rochelle Corliss. Sarah Ann Sickles. Mary Colleen Fisher. Patrick Joseph Briscoe. David James Bess. Matthew George Long. Ashley Marie Wilcox. Michelle Ann Loudon. Sarah Jean Moore. Raymond Donald Howes. Alicia Ellen Davidson. Laurel Rebecca Erickson. Jennifer Marie Siler. You'll figure it out. Amy Lynn Hafferty. Emily Elizabeth Olmstead. Monica Lynn Hale. Alicia May Yearling. Carissa Ann Wagner. Nicole Renee Nolan. Michelle Lee Mock. Justine Renee Prince. Nicole K. Green. Leka Tiffany Oda. Don't be in too much of a rush. Esther C. McRae. I said bye. Ashley Marie Magos. Elise Marie Malter.
Christopher James Cole. Tyler Thomas Fulmer. Derek Ray McFarland. Justin Hall Parker. Jeffrey Lawrence Harvey. Ryan Thomas Stevenson. Chevelle Marie Smallwood. Megan Elizabeth Miller. Cassidy Faye Nash. Charles Edward Jabour. Elizabeth Hope Capella. Mohammed Aziz Ahmed. <laughs> Abdul Daya Mohammed Ahmed. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth Gray. Ashley Marie Parks. Chantel M. Clausen. Mary Beth Van Leuven. Tina Marie Jennings. <laughs> Alan Wayne Nagel. <laughs> Erica Marie Dubois. Katie Marie Weller. Corey Michael Donner. Ian Patrick Joyce. Zachary Scott Kosmerick. <laughs> Tyler Michael Curtis. <laughs> Nicole Lee Mason. Robert Allen James Sloan. Cassandra Rose Hart. Jonathan Russell Burke. Sarah Elizabeth Hannon. Yeah. 
Andrew Michael Anderson. <laughs> Megan K. Scott. David Moore Barrett. Danielle Maria Severn. Robert Lee Moore. Nick Ray Zimmer. Ryan Thomas Marvin. Charles Jesse Dozier. Chad Ryan Gleason. <laughs> Kayla Sue Stahl. <laughs> Christina Marie Weller. Andrew Philip Lesko. Bryce Philip Barber. Taj Allen Summy. Eliane Ray Ballman. Gregory Allen Satterley. Tia Marie Gardner. Sarah Faye McCurley. Brent Allen Yule. Craig Allen Yuhas. Brian Michael Richard. Trevor Jeffrey Gray. Sarah Marie Graff. Hi. Caitlin Rose Shire. <laughs> Jeremiah Andrew Mataska. <laughs> Stacy May Nickerson. <laughs> Courtney Natasha Kelly. Bryce Allen Hicks. Chris Michael Sherman. Jeremy Lynn Wilbur. Charles Benjamin Sheeter Jr. Justin Daniel.
Daniel Mather. Justin Michael Manzer. Nicholas Robert Gallio. Eric James Walker. Cody Allen Steffi. Andrew Allen Hazel. Christine Colette Laburn. Marissa Georgette Welch. Caitlin Rose Halstead. Kayla Ann Marie Crandall. Kayla Marie Johnson. Kelly Marie Foote. Brandon Lee Thompson. Lindsay Danielle Wagner. Christopher Hodge. Good. Ready to do this, Mitch? Sure. Good job. Kenneth Mitchell Hahn. <laughs> Brian Lee Sigourney. Ryan Reed Hutchins. Andrew Joseph Keeling. Thomas James Hatt. Jeffrey William Lewis. <laughs> Aziz Aziz Ahmed. <laughs> Raji D. Ahmed. Elizabeth Charlene Calloway. <laughs> Jamie Marie Huntington. <laughs> Kurt Stephen Weigel. <laughs> Sarah Denise Hemker. Brittany Renee Kruger. Sarah Marie Batterson. Hi, Don. Don Louise Kozier.
Danielle Nicole Luce. Pretty close. Jennifer Catherine A. Heather Noel Lawhead. Jackson Christopher Bartlett. Anthony James Wilbur. Daniel Barton Stempion. Aaron Roy Wood. Dang it. Katera Lynn Nelson. David Ryan Feldbauer. And Aaron Michelle Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2005. King Wendy. King Wendy Jr. once said, change has a considerable psychological impact on the human mind. To the fearful, it is threatening because it means things may get worse. To the hopeful, it is encouraging because things may get better. And to the confident, it is inspiring because the challenge exists to make things better. Today we are faced with one of the most significant changes we have encountered in our lives. And I hope that we are challenged by this change to make things better for ourselves, our families, and our country. Over the past four years, our class has worked towards a common goal of graduating. Now that we are here, we can reflect on our past accomplishments and strive towards our future goals. It hasn't been an easy task, but our experiences have prepared us to overcome adversity in our futures. We are leaving CHS much differently than we entered. We have new ideas, experiences, and accomplishments that will take us into our next step in life. Whether entering into higher education, the service, or the workforce, we will carry our memories of CHS with us. The beliefs of our parents, the thinking of our teachers, and the opinions of our classmates have shaped us into who we are. Now we are leaving these established ideals and entering a world of limitless possibilities. We are no longer constrained by our high school reputations, becoming part of a society where C students become president and class nerds run Fortune 500 companies. We have been fortunate to be backed by a community that encourages our success and has endlessly given us their support. I hope that we leave here with a mindset open to change and respect for what has brought us here. Thanks, Amanda. Members of the class of 2005, I welcome you. Now as alumni of Coldwater High School, please rise. Move your tassels to the left side. Be presented to the audience. 